This is one of my favorite things, logarithmic and exponential models. There are several math courses where you're going to do a lot of work with these. The five most common types of exponential functions or logarithmic functions are as follows. The exponential growth model, y equals a e to the bx. Exponential decay model, a equals e to the minus bx. The Gaussian model, a e to the minus x minus b squared over c. Logistic growth, a over 1 plus b e to the rx. And we have two logarithmic models. Now what I've done here is use a calculator to graph some of these so that you can see their general shape and see why they would be so important. There's exponential growth and decay. Now, the Gaussian model, notice, does it look an awful lot like the normal curve? Well, actually, a part of that formula gets used in statistics. On the right, we have the logistic growth. It is important in differential equations. And then we've got our two natural and common uh, logarithmic models. They are used in things like figuring out the Richter scale for earthquakes. All right. Let's suppose we have an initial investment of $2,000 at a rate of 1.5%. We're going to compound continuously. We want to do two things. Find the time to double, and then how much do we have after 10 years? Okay. Now, needless to say, we're going to set it up using the blackboard, but then we'll use the calculator to compute. Now, remember the quickie way of doing doubling. So we need to come in here and solve. 2 equals e to the 0 0.015, because it was 1.5% t, and we want to solve for t. All right, it takes 46 years for that money to double. We're getting a lousy interest rate. Now, how much after 10 years? Well, it's easy. We stick in 2,000 times e to the 0 0.015 times 10. And so we go back to this, and uh, we just simply substitute 10 for t and let it uh, do its thing. 2,000 e to the 0 0.015 times 10. And I'll give me a minute here to get it keyed in. And then we're going to see that um, in 10 years, we will have made $2,323 and change. Now, here's an interesting one. A conservation organization releases 100 animals of an endangered species into a game preserve. The organization believes that the preserve has a carrying capacity of 1,000 animals. And here's the formula we're going to use. We want to know what's the population after five months, and after how much time will a population reach 500. Now, you're going to solve a lot of problems like that in differential equations. Okay. So what we're doing is we're keying our formula in 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9 times e to the minus 0.1656 power times our 5 years. Now they gave us that formula. Whoops, I missed a parenthesis. And so in 5 years, our population, notice, is only going to be 202.7. Evidently, we've got a declining population. Now, the next thing we wanted to do is, when will the population be down to only 500? So we put our formula in again, but in this case, we don't know what t is. We put the 0.1656t. We're going to ask it to solve for t. And we notice that in 13 years, we will be down to, um, oh, I misspoke a minute. The population is increasing. After five years, we've got 202. I believe we started with 100 or something like that. So the number of months for population to reach 5,000. Now, let's pull out our good old maple and let's look at this. This is your classic S-curve. The function has y equal to 1,000 as a horizontal asymptote.
It's increasing everywhere, but notice how the increasing slows down as it approaches that asymptote of y equal to 1,000.